I was on my way to somewhere else. I got a call asking if I could cut these beams up. And they told me they're really big. I might not be able to lift them with the skid loader. I said, that's ridiculous. I felt attacked, actually. My skid loader can lift anything. Jiminy Christmas, I cannot believe how big those actually are. But we're gonna give it a try. 28 foot long, 36 inches wide, and like 18 inches tall. Crazy. You're teetering, back rock. Yeah. You're you're teetering. You don't like being on that side of the hill. Yeah. Hey, why don't you just lift it up? Let him pull out. Basically, no other way to describe it. These things are enormous. And the disc golf course that I worked at a couple weeks ago is building a bridge across a pond area. It'd be kind of like what I've got at my pond, only bigger. And they want to make the planks and all the supports and stuff. They're using, you know, steel I-beams. But then everything else about the bridge is going to be made out of these railroad ties right here and i'm going to cut them up on my mill now this is actually wider than the mill and they don't need planks or any any material this wide so the first step of that is going to be separating these into thirds and then we'll mill the third each of these thirds up and we'll have to cut them to length too because my mill's only 16 and a half foot capacity and these are 28. Uh, this will be a fun project first we'll probably have to use a, a cutting torch to get these giant bolts out and to get these separated will be a whole project and then actually milling them will be different hopefully we can get all the metal out but for right now i'm going to mill one of these smaller oak logs and see what kind of yield we can get out of a really small log 
So basically we're working on two separate projects here. But my project regarding those beams, I have the question for you guys, have any of you ever milled railroad ties? Just wondering, I know they're chemically treated, should probably wear a mask, which I'm not crazy about, but I don't know what's in those. So if you got any experience with them about that or anything else, just let me know. Okay. So the only other thing I have to do before we can start milling is I took the nuts loose on the leveling feet when we were trying to square up the stand and I have not re-leveled this. So we just got to check that out real quick. It seems to be pretty well level the way it sits on this side. So I'm going to, you know, I didn't intentionally move these nuts that it sets on. I just loosened the top nuts. So we'll tighten these, this side down and see if we're level side to side. Yeah, I'm getting the same thing here, like this side needs to come down just a little bit. Another factor is, I have not ran this since Paul sharpened that blade, so we'll see how well it cuts. But first thing I need to do is go get the logs. I did not dump that log off the back of the mill, but I could sure as heck see how somebody could. There's actually a pretty big size difference from one end of this log to the other. So we need to raise this end up to kind of center it. But my jack is centered here. Way to put the log on it. Hmm, that's what you say when you're still thinking about it. So I could either run something like a two by four on that side of the log to bring it in so the jack would get it and that would kind of straighten out the log where it, it, it kind of curves out on this side. Let's look at it from the end. I could do that but the alternative is I could move my jack or this thing's actually not that heavy I could just put some chunks of wood under it but you see there's a big flare on this end I literally might not get anything out of this as a yield. So there's two parts of that story Number one, I got a bunch of small logs up there to take to the show. I want to find out if they're going to be worth using at the show. The second part of it is, I picked one of the worst logs to test this on. Let's just see what happens if I raise this jack here. The pad is not really under the log, but just the side of the jack lifting might still raise that up. And that is raising it. Yeah, this is just not a very good log for this because not only is it small, but it's also bowed down in the middle. All right, let's open the doors up, make sure we got this thing tracking all right. This is just part of the normal routine of starting up. It's a little bit different because I had this blade all the way off. Okay. That looks like it's tracking close enough that it won't come off. Now let's tighten it up. And snug, so we go half, one, half, two, and a half. Seems to be tracking okay. At the show, I might just slice these as live edge so I can get multiple passes in a short period of time as people are coming by to check it out. 
But I have no interest right now for what I'm doing. I have no interest in having a bunch of live edge. I want dimensional lumber, even if in this case it may just be a couple of two by sixes or something. I want to let the blade spin and run this until I see water coming out. Now really, I'm using my own jack here, but it's just evidence to how much nicer the Woodland Mills jack is because it slides back and forth to get under your log. For mine, I put it in one spot and it works great for a big log, not for a small one. I grabbed my cant hook, but I don't need a cant hook for this little bitty log. Now this log has a sweep to it right in the end and I've got that setting on this beam. If I slide, right now this log's tilted like this, but if I slide this down a foot, it'll alleviate that to a large extent. Letting the end of this taper drop off of there helped make it easier to level the log, but I am still going to jack this side up a little. General rule is you want to level one side, level the other side. Once you have two sides that are not parallel but perpendicular to each other, there's no more leveling after that. Now that two sides are done, we can remove the log stops completely.
So I'm going to make cuts at eight quarters. I think we're going to get two two by sixes out of this, essentially. They'll be oversized two by sixes. So this was a tiny little log, especially on that end, and it was crooked as a snake, but that didn't take me very long, a half an hour, and I've got two two by sixes, about nine feet long, and a one by six. And this is the best lumber you can get anywhere. I just love rough cut lumber. This is a true two inch, hard as a rock, oak, and if you want to build something structural out of this, it's fantastic. And it doesn't even matter that it's got this little bit of live edge on it. Now, if you're building a house, you run into some problems that it might shrink. And it might not be the same thickness as the ones I did last week. And you got to pay attention to all that. But for putting up a sawmill shed, this is gold right here. Absolutely love it. And I got that whole stack of logs in exchange for doing that um, driveway mowing job with the boom mower. And I feel really good about it. And I feel good about the idea of doing this as a demonstration at that show. So, should be a good time. That's about two weeks from now. The next couple days, I got some cool stuff lined up. I've, tomorrow, I'm going to the Four States Farm Show, which is always a good one. But I appreciate you taking time to watch this video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.